Hello, I am Ryan Thurman, and you're watching the Bigfoot documentary, Squatch Edition. To start off with, you need to know a little bit about this creature that has become known as Bigfoot. To say the obvious, Bigfoot received his name from his feet, which are big. Bigfoot is a name for the North American Sasquatch. Other common names include the Yeti, the Hairy Man, and other localized names, such as the Fout Monster, located in Fout, Arkansas. The definition of Bigfoot is a cryptozoology animal that is an ape-like, large, hairy creature supposedly found in northwestern America. He is a very intelligent creature, and they are known to travel along power lines to follow animals and their migration patterns. They are typically known to live in areas with plenty of trees to make their presence hidden, as well as swampy areas with plenty of food and water. Animals that they eat include small animals, such as rabbits and squirrels, and big animals such as moose, elk, and deer. They also like warmer climates with the occasional windy day because of their thick fur. They are also very playful creatures, having known to be throwing rocks at people's tents just to simply play with them. Whistling sounds are often heard, and it is believed that they mimic sounds that they hear from humans and other creatures. I also had the pleasure to go to this year's Arkansas State Bigfoot Conference held in Bologna, Arkansas. Here is some of the footage that I got to listen to. All the movies and I, you know, and the documentaries, and they're all going out and investigating. Why, why can't I do that too? And so I threw my hat in the ring. And if you're think you're just curious about this, and you're thinking about being a researcher, I say get out in the woods and try it. Get out in the woods and do it. Uh, somebody's going to find this thing, and it just might as well be you as, as anybody else. Uh, Lyle, I'm going to turn this over to you. Well, we were at camp one night, and again sitting around just collecting audio. And we had a fire going, it was about the end of October, so it's kind of cold out, and kind of we had a fire. Now the wind is, when we sit in camp, I'll sit facing my partner, and he'll sit so we can see behind each other, okay? <laughs> Last thing I wanted to do would be sitting there making up a line of crap and laughing and have something come and tap me. <laughs> I'm not interested in that, I don't bring enough underwear for that. <laughs> because this is unlike any owl call that I've ever gotten. And again, this was only about 10 minutes after that breathing incident. This is like a combination of two bad bulls and a roaring bear or something mixed together. But it's very, very close to this <laughs> long, screaming, drawn out cry that just went whoo, and it just kept on and on and on and on. And then it came down at the end. It was kind of like, like that. And then I grabbed my gun and made sure it was loaded. I was in a building, but it still scared me. Contrary to popular belief, perhaps because of their big size, Bigfoots are harmless creatures. They also leave behind clues to their existence. Such clues include Bigfoot tracks, many of which have been plastered for presentation. Many Bigfoots also use wood knocks, perhaps as a means for communication. Wood knocks have just recently been tested out in the woods. Researchers go out in the woods with actual wood, with actual wood that's hard, and they go and they hit it to try to get a response from Bigfoots. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The key is to try to get it to echo, so that, that way it can be heard from anywhere in the forest, not just in one particular location. They also do howls that have been recorded. One such call is the Ohio, cow, uh, the Ohio call. The Ohio call is a very peculiar one. In this call, it's very long and drawn out, and it's meant to travel long distance. Woo! Then you'd wait three to five seconds to see if they respond. Another call includes the woman screaming. The woman screaming is a really weird call to hear in the woods. It sounds sort of like a woman being murdered, but it's not. See, this is why researchers get confused, because a woman being murdered in the woods is really different than a Bigfoot howl big in the woods. Woo! 
It sounds really piercing in the air. I can't do a pierce sound, but that's what it would sound like. Um, there's also a whoop, which is very, very common. Whoop! And then you just repeat it one more time. Um, there's other, uh, there's also other calls that are used, but those are just the basics. If you want to get into more detail, you can go online. There's plenty of calls that have been reported that you can go through. Bigfoots also are known to like mimic human sounds. They've mimicked owls as well as in the video that you probably saw earlier from the Bigfoot conference. They also are known to talk. This is called samurai chatter. It sounds sort of like samurai, but it's not men talking. It's Bigfoots grunting. I'm not a professional at this, so don't laugh. There's different sounds. They go back and forth. To conclude, Bigfoots are very intelligent ape-like creatures. They will soon be discovered and brought out into civilization, and we will all be like have proof that it's actually real. Bigfoots are real. It's only if you believe right now. If you would like to learn more information about Sasquatch or join a research team dedicated to finding Bigfoot, talk to me or go online to a Bigfoot database to get more information and get started. Happy squatching.